Hi there, and welcome to, whoops, welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and it's Thursday yet again. Time to do some drawing. I hope you're ready to do some drawing. I hope you have uh, the wherewithal, or failing that, at least some paper and some sort of implements. I am going to be working with a brush today. I'm going to be drawing with a brush. And I'm going to be using some ink, probably. So if you'd like to come along with me and draw in ink, you could also use a brush pen, probably. Or you could just use anything you want. You could use a crayon. You could use, I don't know, a magic marker. You could use a finger dipped in coffee. Whatever you want. Thanks, so Lee, my friend from Korea. It is so nice to see you. I have no idea what time of day it is for you, but I hope it's uh, reasonable. And thank you, everybody else who's joining us from all around the world to draw. So, let me explain what's going on behind me. Not much. Uh, we have trashed what was there. The studio has been dismantled and bits have been moved to other parts of the house. Bits have been moved to deeper parts of the, the trash can. Um, but yes, this is a process. This is the process of trying to I don't know, change this studio. The studio was kind of built, as you may know, we kind of moved here in a hurry, the beginning of the pandemic, almost two years ago, and uh, just kind of started accumulating junk and piling it up in this room, which is where the studio is. And uh, all along, I've been thinking, one day, I want to try and make this better. I want to try and design this thing I want to try and uh, go through my art supplies in a proper way. And uh, finally, that day has arrived. Well, it actually, it hasn't arrived yet. It's a process. It wasn't a day. It's been over a week now. It's going to take some more time. There's more equipment to get in here. There's all kinds of stuff. But in the days, weeks, months, possibly years ahead, you will see things change behind me. But right now, it's kind of grim, kind of bleak. But uh, it's actually nice having some space. So I don't really mind it. And um, it is, it is, yeah, you're lucky you're not seeing the floor because the floor is covered with all kinds of stuff. It's, in, it's fun to go through art supplies and kind of examine each one and see, is this still any good? Is this tube of paint too dried up? Is this... Um, do I ever use this thing that I bought years ago? Should I learn how to use it? There's all kinds of decisions to be made. Um, but also it's it's kind of fun. It's like finding old friends. Oh my, I've forgotten I had this. Uh, this is pretty cool. So, you know, and finding old things kind of inspires new ideas. But this is not the time to have new ideas. I've got to get it. I've got it finished doing what I'm doing here, getting this room ready before I start having lots of new ideas. But it's fun. It is fun to play with. And um, so, yes. <sighs> um, what else did I want to talk about? A lot of things, really. Um, I don't... I Okay, I know what I'm going to talk about next. Let's talk about, about Hanamula. Yeah, because I have some news about Hanamula, which is... It's their birthday. 438 years old on February 7th. Honolulu was founded in 1584. That's quite some time ago. Um, and uh, here's a paper birthday cake, but I didn't have room. For, there's no room for 438 birthday candles on it. So, But happy birthday, Hanamula. You know, I like Hanamula... I don't really talk about them as a company very much, but you know we we've been working with them for a number of years now. We first met them around the time when we did SketchCon. You may remember that event in the distant past, but hopefully the not too distant future as well. 
But um, Hanamula, we like Hanamula for a number of reasons. One, of course, is that um, their paper is really great. It's it's hand. There's always a handcrafted element in what they do, um, and they they after 438 years they kind of know what they're doing. But I also like another aspect of them, which is their kind of commitment to sustainability, to the environment, to doing things in a way that doesn't damage the environment. You think of paper as being like a pretty benign thing, right? But the fact is there's all kinds of stuff that happens in the manufacturing process. There's also things that happen in the paper itself. And the paper, you know, is your paper going to last? Is your paper going to, you know, be good for, and healthy for you? Those are all kind of considerations. And Hanamula is actually located in a nature reserve, which is kind of bizarre, but but nonetheless uh, an interesting place to have a factory. Uh, and so the, so sustainability is obviously important to them, and of course, you know, doing stuff in a smart way in the environment. And I've talked about their agave paper and the bamboo paper. Um, those are kind of new innovations where they're making stuff uh, out of natural fibers that's you know that works better. Um, and that is better for the environment. This may sound like an ad, but it really is. And I think knowing your materials is a really important part of developing as an artist. There's all kinds of examples of artists getting, you know, pretty sick from using materials in a way that uh, that affects their health. And, you know, of course, we're all concerned about what happens with the environment. So, so these things matter to me. They matter to us at Sketchbook School. And... We just like the people who we work with. Joe is often often comes to draw with me, and they've been supportive of, of draw with me and Sketchbook Soul since the beginning. So, yeah, happy birthday to them! And um, today I'm going to be using um, a Hanamula, not surprising, a Hanamula um, watercolor pad. And and what's cool about this, as far as you're concerned, is this is so this is. This is like the really great, really good quality um, watercolor paper, nice and heavy. And we are going to be giving some of it away. So if you would like to get one of these pads, we're gonna, we have a few to give away. Write to us, info at sketchbookschool.com, and tell us, tell us about something like why would you like it? What, were you gonna, what would you do with it? Have you ever used it? What do you think is cool about it? Just tell us a little bit of something. But even if you don't, we're going to randomly grab a few names and we're going to send you off some of these pads. So, um, unfortunately, because we're sponsored by Hanamula, which is a German company, but we're sponsored by their U.S. company, U.S. division, uh, we can only send you in the U.S. one of these things. But we've been firing them off a lot. It's this... This, it's the collection, it's water, it's um, cold press, it is nice stuff. So um, if you'd like it, let us know. We sent out a bunch of stuff last week that we were doing. Um, I don't know, it just feels like it's nice giving stuff away. I like it. So, all right, so that is the paper story. What are we going to do on this paper today? Well, here's what I've been thinking about. Um lubricate the mechanism first and today we're going to talk about the year of the tiger it's the year of the tiger the chinese new year was well i think it lasts for a couple weeks but it was started on tuesday and um i thought that it would be nice to pay tribute to that tigers are really interesting animals um you know that there are there are not very many tigers left in the wild. I think there's something like three or 4,000 of them. That's it, three or 4,000 of them. I don't know how many were in that horrific Tiger King show. That thing still haunts me. Um, but, you know, there are not that many chi uh, tigers left. And um, ironically, the Chinese have been responsible for, for a lot of the kind of depletion in the, in the number of tigers in the world because they use them for Chinese traditional medicine and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of grim, and there aren't that many of them left. But nonetheless, the Chinese have named this year uh, the year of the tiger. They cycle through every 12 years. And this is not only the year of the tiger, it's also the, it's the water year. I guess they go in sequences of four. 
So this is the year of the water tiger. So it seems appropriate. We're going to be painting a tiger, in my case, on watercolor paper. And, uh, of course, it's also the beginning of the Olympics. Again, the Olympics? Yes, in China. So a lot of things like that going on. So here's some facts about Chinese, about the Chinese zodiac that I thought was vaguely interesting. Um, lucky colors, blue, gray, and orange, and unlucky colors, brown. So there you go. Um, brown. Is brown generally an unlucky color? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that's brown. But anyways, so, so yes, so avoid brown. Avoid six, seven, and eight. Okay. That's a, that's, a lo that's a good sequence. That's hard to avoid. Avoid the Southwest. I live in the Southwest. And there's a seven in my address. And I live... Uh, okay. But there's also a three and a four and a one. So I'm, I'm okay. Um, and uh, yellow lilies and a cinerari. I'm not sure what that is exactly, but those are lucky. And uh, east, north, and south are lucky, but wouldn't you know it, the southwest isn't. So, wah, wah. Um, so anyway, so here's what I was thinking. Okay, so I wanted to tell you that I have terrible fear about today. I'm nervous. I'm nervous that what I'm going to try to do is going to be a horrible disaster in terms of my artwork. Occasionally the case. Generally I try to be optimistic. But let me tell you the story. And then I actually I think I've brought it back. I think I was more nervous. I think I've calmed myself down today. So I don't want you to get nervous. I don't want you to think that we're going to be doing something really hard. Because yes, it's tigers. Yes, it's on watercolor paper. Yes, it's with a brush. But here's what my inspiration was. And this is perhaps the terrifying part. I was like, oh, let's just go with, uh, you know, some Chinese art. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, let's just knock off one of these. Or uh, maybe one of these. What do you think? <coughs> What about one of these? These, I mean, these Chinese brush paintings are just amazing, I think. I think they're beautiful. But there's also the facility and, and the, the fluidity of the lines and stuff like that that are just so cool, so beautiful. Um, so, yeah, so, I was, so all week long I was thinking, you know, we'll just do one of these Chinese brush paintings of a tiger. That's what we'll do this week. And then I thought, okay, let me just go and have a look at those things and see uh, what are they really like. And uh, then I realized, like, okay, that might be a stretch. Okay, fair enough. It's a stretch. We can stretch. We're flexible. Let's see what happens. Angela's giving me some encouragement. I appreciate that, Angela. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens to you. But thank you, Angela. And then I found this guy. And I thought, okay, this guy seems manageable. What do you think? He's also kind of cute. So it's just sort of the face, a little bit of body. And I thought, okay, let's see if we can... And again, we don't have to copy this. We can just be inspired by it. All right? Let's be inspired by it. And that's my excuse. Oh, no, I wasn't trying to copy it. I was just being inspired by it. <laughs> okay. He is cute, though. It's true. So let's get into it, all right? Let's get our paper out. So let me talk about what I'm going to actually try and do. Um, yeah, so let me get rid of this Hanamula thing. And so what I was thinking is... I thought it would be cool to um, to use Sumi ink. This is Sumi ink. Isn't it, I mean, what a be this has got to be like in the running for most beautiful art supply. This is a block of solid ink. It lasts forever and it costs like nothing. So you should try this out and I can show you how I use it. I used to have like a beautiful stone palette 
and I would use that, and then I don't know what happened to it. It got lost in one of my moods. So um, let's just get this out of here and put this guy down, and I'll show you roughly what I do now. So what I like about this guy also is you can carry him around in your bag, and then what I've done is I've taken it, and I've like literally I've done this where I've taken a thing of water and just dipped it in. Like So if I'm out, say, urban sketching, I can take this guy, and then I've rubbed it on the sidewalk. So imagine I'm sitting down. I rubbed it on the sidewalk, and then I... Um, head ink because this is what happens because if you rub it like this you do that you start to get some ink here this is all i'm doing is i'm just rubbing it and i'm kind of breaking it down and there you go there's a bit of ink now this ink is really nice because it is uh, not it has this cool form but also what i like about it is the ink is kind of warm and i like it when it's diluted um, so, yeah, so that's that. I also have it in a bottle here. This is, it's Japanese here, this particular kind. Maybe all sumi ink is Japanese. No, it's not, it's Chinese. I don't know. Um, but this is it in a, in liquid form, which I use also. But I like the sumi ink. I think it's, it's just a nice gentle kind of ink. Sometimes India ink can just seem a bit harsh to me. Okay, so let's have a look back at our tiger. And uh, actually, let's look at a different point of view. Let's look at this. Okay. So there you go. All right. Corinne is grabbing her stuff. She's got an ink stick. She's got her stone. She's got her Chinese brush. And she's got rice paper. All right. All I can tell you is that on Tuesday, I had Chinese food for dinner. That's as close as I'm coming to any sort of level of authenticity. And some of that may still be uh, lurking inside of me. So I have a little Chinese in me, and that's about all I can say for today. <laughs> so yeah. All right. We are ready. Notice that I'm noticing that I'm uh, taking a while to get going. Let's just see what Cynthia has to say here. She says, it takes me forever to rub those ink blocks down to try to get dark enough. Okay. Well, one thing you can do is you can take a knife, and you can kind of scratch it a little bit and some of it will come off but also you can scratch it and that just makes it a bit textured and then it, it's more easy i mean i was doing it on glass which is not ideal it would be better stone is nice because with stone you get some roughage so yeah but um so yes where else what else do we have to say here he said again I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time, man. Relaxing into it. You know, I almost picked up this, this beaker of water and took a sip. But I'm not going to. I'm going to take a sip of coffee instead. Here we go. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking... Let's do it with... Let's focus on midtones first. So I'm going to focus on the mid-tones. <sighs> and I'm going to try. So I'm going to, I'm, this is sort of a combination of drawing and painting, really. I say that because I'm sort of drawing an, an outline, but I'm going to fill this in in a second. But first, I want to kind of just get my bearing a bit and sort of see where am I at in terms of the main elements. So getting these eyes right is going to be the trick because so there's a lot of expression in that. And I want to make sure I don't screw that up at the right at the get-go. green 
really nice. And I'm not using, I am not using an, a Chinese brush. I'm using a, a British brush, actually. It's a, it's a Windsor Newton Series 7, which is my kind of brush I use for everything. So I, I don't really want to get into those details yet. I want to focus more on just getting these areas of midtone. So that is my game plan. In fact, I'm going to remind myself of that by just filling in his nose with tone. I think once I get these eyes in, I once I get them in placed at least I will I can be a bit more calm, relaxed about it all. So you notice I, I'm it's really I'm not using much of this ink, you see, it's just you can see here doesn't take an awful lot to just load the brush and it lasts for actually a surprisingly long time like I don't really need to reload very much because I'm using pretty fine level I mean I'm, I'm, I'm using a not much of it Cool adaptation, having these stripes. Do you know that every tiger stripes are unique? Is unique? It's like, um, that's how researchers, I think, track them in the wild because they each have, it's almost like a barcode. They each have a unique pattern of, of stripes. Hey, I forgot to mention, speaking of wild animals, I forgot to mention how cool all those teddies were that you guys did last week. A number of people painted my original teddy, but then there were all kinds of other variations and other kinds of, um, I guess, personal critters that were also there in that uh, little display. See how already, like, there's different... See how this is much lighter than this? It's kind of like as my brush depletes, as the ink depletes in it, it uh, becomes a lighter color, which I like. I like to have it light because you can always make it darker, but you can't make it lighter. Now, if I was one of those Chinese brush masters, which, just in case you were wondering, I actually am not, um, I would just do like, I would just do like three strokes and like it would start coming to life. But I could do that, but I'm afraid it would intimidate you. So, just so you know, I mean, it's not that I couldn't do it. To be super cool. Yeah. Just in case you're wondering. Just in case you're tuning into this for the first time, you're like, wait, this guy has a YouTube show? The bear guy can barely draw a tiger. Yep. I do.
There's something about this medium that, you know, it kind of, it's, even if it's not terribly well drawn, it does sort of start to look like a Chinese thing. And I think that's partly because of this color, the color of this ink. You see what I'm saying about how it's kind of gentle? Right? It's not a big, I mean, if I did this with India ink and it was like really black, and then even if you dilute the India ink, it would still be in kind of shades of gray. Whereas this is really, it's warm gray. It's almost, dare I say it, unlucky brown. Carefully, because that highlight is really important to give him his expression, and there's no way. I mean, this is not the kind of thing that you go in and, and take like a white gel pen and knock it out. I don't know. I'm saying that now, but it's possible. I may later on go, you know what? I think I'll bring in a, <clears throat> a white gel pen because I screwed up the highlight, but probably not. I'm really hoping. But you see, I can, I can now kind of sort of build it up, I keep building it up. Got to be, I got to be a bit careful as I'm layering it, but it's okay now. But I am when I'm, I'm going to go in and put in the black, and when I do that, I got to make sure that this is all really dry. So we'll worry about that in a second. I'm also using, obviously, using this light gray to kind of outline the areas that are white. I'm not really, um, I'm not painting them in, but I'm just, you know, there are edges that are, the edges of the areas that are white, because obviously I'm, I can't paint the white stuff. So yeah, the, this ink block thing, you should really try it out. It's really it is really interesting and it's not it's not at all expensive. So honestly, I, I don't know how many years I've owned that one block and you can see I've barely worn it down and I do use it quite often. I do. I think it's uh, it's really nice, nice quality. So yeah, I'm feeling surprisingly not bad about this. It's all about the eyes. I think so much of this is about the eyes, and right now they don't have they don't have their full power yet because I have to add the darks. But I'm trying to be patient. You know, got to be patient here. So um, this part I'm just going to block in a bit. I'm not going to get too detailed about his body. There are no leaf blowers today. What's going on? Isn't today? I thought today was the day that they come. But maybe not. So, so 
this is, as I said, this is Sumi ink. And there is actually Sumi ink paper. Maybe that's what, uh, what Corinne is going to be using. But that, um, and I have some. I have some. And I'm still, and it's, it's a Hanumula product, actually. But I haven't. I haven't really gotten into it. I thought, you know, today is not the day to try that. I want it. Plus, I don't have any of it to give away to you. The way I do this watercolor paper. And this watercolor paper is just doing just fine. I don't, I don't mind that it's not officially sanctioned paper. When I was in, in Beijing a few years ago, I was doing... I, I did this... Uh, I was invited to come and be a resident, artist in residency at this really amazing school, the International School of Beijing. And um, I went to, they have this thing, what is this market called? I want to say it's called the Mud Market. Yeah, I think it is called the Mud Market because it started as a ceramics market. It's this giant outdoor market that's all art. Artists, art supplies, it's unreal. If you ever go to Beijing, check this place out. So it's huge, and they have like an entire kind of street of just brush sell sellers, just people who sell brushes, all different kinds of brushes. And there is um, these guys with these traditional Jap uh, Chinese paintings in stacks, five or six feet tall, just sheets of paper stacked up six feet tall because, um, you know, and they're all done in this traditional style, but then there's also all kinds of contemporary artists as well. Hey, I just, I didn't mention it to you, but I'm just squirting a bit of this black in here. I could grind this other thing, but I, I, I think I'm not going to. I'm just going to use the regular black. So hold your ears a second. I'm just, well, I'm going to turn down the volume. That's nice and dry now. Um, yeah, so this mud market is super cool and is is um, it just shows you the interest that, that the Chinese, or at least the people in Beijing, have about about art. And lettering and, and brushes. They just love. They're just very, I mean, they're, they have just so much more kind of interest and respect for artists than I've ever seen before in any country. Really interested in art. And, uh, And particularly in in sketchbooks and things like that. I mean, I've done most of my books. There are there's at least one, if not two, editions in traditional and in simplified Chinese of almost every one of my books. They they're just really interested in sketchbooks and paper art, art on paper. Just a lot of interest in it. And there's also just, it's considered a sort of a, an important kind of thing to be, to be good at using a brush. You know, obviously they, they do a lot of their writing with brushes. And um, you'll see people in China carrying these big oversized brushes, like really, like the size, like a, like a broomstick with, um, Oh, it's kind of like a rub, uh, like a foam rubber tip. So imagine like a giant brush with a foam rubber tip, and they'll practice doing their calligraphy on the sidewalk, 
with water. Just practicing their strokes. Super cool. If you ever get a chance to go to China, you really should. It's just a fascinating place. I'm sure you've been there already, but um, Brush comes to a pretty fine point, but I probably would have been smarter to also have a second finer brush handy. And I do. There's like one like a few inches away from me. <laughs> but it's kind of like once I've got this guy in my hand, I can't not use him. I did I just do love this brush. This brush is I can kind of do anything with Ah, I think I hear a leaf blower approaching. Yep. Coming. Good. Normalcy has returned. Hope you enjoy this. It's, this. These sounds are brought to you by my lawn guy. So you can see that that this is obviously much blacker now. Um, and I'm layering it on top of this lighter gray in this case. So, and it's not blacker because it's a different ink. It is slightly different, it's, it's a liquid form, but really because I'm keeping it loaded, keeping it Keeping it fully, fully saturated and not diluted. All right. And now the scariest part. So I think I'm going to, I'm diluting it slightly to go in here. Still nervous. This is like the, uh, you know, when you're cutting a diamond or something. It's slightly cross-eyed. Hey, that reminds me. Do you remember Duktari? Do you remember Duktari? It was a TV show when, when I, at least when I was a kid. Duktari. It's about a, a uh, doctor in Africa. Or was he a vet? Doctari. And uh, he had Clarence, the cross-eyed lion. That's so weird. I totally haven't thought about that in many years. Doctari. Anyway, this is, this is Leonard, the cross-eyed tiger. Sorry. 
Swahili. There was like a trend for Swahili in the 60s. There was a monkey. I was going to say cheetah, but cheetah was not. Cheetah was uh, Tarzan's buddy. But there was a monkey as well. I mean, a, a chimp. So you see how this is fading more and more? It's fading. It's getting lighter and lighter. I'm not sure if you can exactly tell it on the screen. But this Sumi ink, as it's drying, it's fading not really fading away, but getting lighter and lighter. And that's one of the things that I love about this stuff. Is it, it gets lighter, so then you can go back in and you can say, okay, I'm going to just keep layering it and, and giving it more intensity. Even this black, see that black? It's just not that black anymore. It's just kind of gray. Now what you could do is if you wanted to really get nuts with your blacks, you could go and maybe even bring in some India ink. I don't know. But what's nice about this is it does... It is kind of more forgiving because, because you're not just putting down the super black ink. You're putting down something that's going to be slightly softer, slightly more forgiving. Yeah. All right, I'm feeling reasonable about this. I don't know how much further I want to go with it. I feel like I... I crossed the biggest, most terrifying threshold, which was like, can I, can I do this at all? Can I get it vaguely right? And it's like, it's not bad. It is not bad. So um, that was fun. I'm kind of done. I don't really want to overwork him. What are you going to do? Yeah. He doesn't have the charm of the original. I don't think, but he's not utterly embarrassing either. And that's the that's the realm in which I live, or in which I aspire to live. Somewhere between the mundane and the acceptable. I'd like to keep my sights. I think it's better to go in and achieve mediocrity than to be afraid of perfection and never to go anywhere at all, right? Don't you think that's true? And if you do enough mediocre things, eventually one of them will be a bit more exceptional. You know, just... Uh, just... You know what they say, under-promise, over-deliver, or under-promise... And delivered kind of what they expected. It's okay. You kind of expected me not to do something really incredibly great today. And uh, yeah, I kind of got it. So. Some of you are being, are being uh, generous and saying that you prefer the eyes of, the origin of, of mine. That's nice. Okay. There he is. And it's okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. We'll see. See how yours turned out. I hope that uh, you had a chance to do it. I, I see that some of you are saying that you are quite happy with yours. Um, quite happy with yours. So that's good. Oh, Sang Sob says, the style of painting drawn only with water and black ink is called Sumikwa. Is that it? Sumikwa? 
Korean pronunciation. Oh, I see. So that's probably a Chinese thing too. Although your lettering is obviously Korean, but yes. All right. Well, you know, I think you look at it and you go, yeah, it seems like a Chinese thing. Yeah, seems cool. I hope you enjoyed doing it. I hope it was fun, not too challenging, and uh, that you had enough time to, to knock one out. I look forward to seeing it when you're going to share it with me on social media, as I know you are going to. Even if it was not, even if you didn't love how it turned out, let's see. Let's see how it worked. You know, it's so, so, so happened when you first start doing um, something, anything. It is, there's, there's, the opportunity to fail is so enormous. A lot of times we don't even try doing something new because we just don't like the feeling of failure. But sometimes you'll surprise yourself. Like I kind of surprised myself doing this today. You know? It like is better than I thought it was going to be. So there's that. But also I know that if I do it again, which I may or may not do, it will probably be different. I was going to say it'll probably be better, but I don't know about that, but it'll, it'll probably be different. It'll probably be different. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know how to upload it, that means you don't. You, all you have to do is go to Facebook or go to Instagram or anywhere else that you post social media, although those are the places we look. Go to Facebook or go to social media. Just put it up there and put hashtag SBS art. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. I'll show it to you in a minute. All right. Well, Wilma likes her tiger. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. Um, Angela at least likes the fact that she did it. She didn't say whether she likes the actual tiger. Um, and yeah, who else? Gabriella, also pleased with hers. So yes. And Beverly is inspired <laughs> by my courage. Yeah, well, that's very, that's very nice of you. I'll, I'll, I'll accept courage. Well, that was certainly, it was certainly very brave of you to wear that. Courage. No, that's a lion. Courage. If I only had a brain. Peggy likes her tiger. Brand art yoga. Do your friends call you brand? So yes. And Lanny, yes, Lanny, this, that's what we're celebrating, the year of the tiger. The year of the tiger, 2022. Gisela likes hers. And uh, good. Virginia used great pit pens. So great pit pens are brush markers, soft, uh, soft tip. That would be a, that's a great way of doing this too. Sophia had fun, and Sigrun likes what I did. Thank you, Sigrun. So, all right, cool. Well, that was that. That was today's draw with me. But we are going to meet again soon, very soon. Um, where, where, what, what, what should we do in the meantime? Thanks for Wait, drawing. Don't me. do that yet. Uh, I want to remind you about my podcast. I'd like to remind you about the podcast that I'm doing with John John uh, Laws. Um, John Muir Laws is one of the most amazing masters of the nature sketchbook. He knows he's a scientist, so we have conversations about the brain and about science and about art and about mm, creativity and. Uh, we actually have an episode that we just did about all of our favorite art supplies. It's kind of fascinating. All of our favorite art supplies. And that was pretty fun to do. So anyway, every Monday we do this. We do it as a podcast. You can listen to it wherever you go, podcasting. You know you know what that is, right? Uh, so you just go anywhere and look for Art for All podcast. Ding! It will pop up. But also we do it here on YouTube. You might be on Facebook watching this, but if you do it on YouTube... We post the video of us talking, kind of visually one of the most boring things ever, two kind of middle-aged guys talking. But we've had some really interesting conversations, and I enjoy doing it. So if nobody else cares, I don't care, but I like it. And so does Jack, uh, and that's kind of all that matters. So we talk about a whole bunch of different things, and uh, check us out. What else? Uh, yes, here again is that 
address if you would like to get your copy, uh, your uh, Hanamula watercolor collection pad. Let us know where to send it, and uh, we will send it off. Danny'sEssays.com. Every week, now twice a week, I write an essay. I have to say, I'm really getting back into it. I'm really having fun. I'm experimenting. I'm trying stuff, and it's free. Just go to Danny'sEssays.com, put in your email address, and tell me where you want me to send it, and I'll send it to you. I've written some that are painfully long, but I'm also trying to write ones that are shorter. And I love hearing from you after you've read it. So please check it out um, and uh, subscribe. Again, free. Worst comes to worst, delete it when it shows up. But uh, why not try it? And finally, subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Subscribe to it because you'll get a reminder of the podcast on Monday. You'll get a reminder of the video that I do every Friday. Although... I haven't done one for tomorrow yet. I may not do it, but it'll remind you of everything you need to be reminded of, and it supports our channel. And again, what's it to you? Just click that button, subscribe. So, um, yes, so that's all good. Uh, Gisela likes our conversations. That's great. And that is, I'm really happy about that. Uh, JJ says, we're giving away watercolor pads to four people today. Yes. So uh, get yours in because we have four different ones. Um, Patricia likes the podcast. That's great. I'm glad. And uh, Bobby likes it. And the leaf blower likes it. All right, the leaf blower is getting really intense. I'm going to leave. I'm hanging up. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing your tigers. And uh, oh, my God. Bye. Thanks for drawing with me today. We'd love to see what you made. So please Post it on social media or put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard and make sure to tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor and & Newton. And if you'd like some more inspiration for your creativity, here are three things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel and you'll know when I make new videos, which I do every week. Two, Sign up for my free weekly newsletter. A lot of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free. And third, watch another video.